Well, hello, and thanks for tagging along today. I'm going to do some kind of interesting uh, new products here. By the way, this is my uh, six-inch high-tech trim saw. And in the next day or two, I'm going to be cutting up this. I'll show you in the light here. Very, very uh, translucent. It is black agate. Then I'm going to cut up some turquoise here. You can't really see through it too much. A little bit. I have some imperial jade here. Once this stuff is formed up, it's absolutely beautiful, very translucent. This is a piece of rhodonite, and not too much see-through with this. And last but not least, I have here a large piece of lapis lazuli. The lapis lazuli, uh, a friend of mine makes knives. I'm going to cut him a couple slabs, and uh, hopefully I get to show you some of the uh, procedure to making uh, knives out of that. So all these other pieces here, you see all the circles drawn on there. My new project is earrings. They're going to be both hoops and studs. So I'll uh, show you quickly how we cut some of this, and then I'll show you some of the preparation work and the final prep as well. So uh, thanks for joining today. Stick around as we go through. It's going to be a four, five, six minute video. It'll be fun. It'll be start to finish how to take some rough rocks like this and turn them into beautiful pieces of wearable jewelry. Thanks for joining me today on the channel, and now what? And this piece that I'm going to cut today is a beautiful black agate from Monte Lake, British Columbia. This stone has a mysterious, almost smoky allure with dark, rich tones that really stand out in lapidary work. Black agate from this area of British Columbia often has subtle banding and a slightly translucent quality. As I start cutting, the saw moves through the stone. It's like slicing through a dense shadow. There's a bit more resistance here compared to softer stones, so you want to be patient and let the saw do the work. Every piece of Monte Lake black agate has its own unique personality, making it a great material for dramatic pendants or statement rings or even earrings. It's always a thrill working with stone like this, natural, local, and packed with character. And there you have the actual cutting time for this piece of British Columbia Monte Lake black agate. So rather than bore you, uh, I just did the one set that I cut. This is the rest of them. This is the preliminary cuts that I've done for all of them. Uh, they'll go on earrings like this. They are studs and hoops. And that first set that you saw me cut, that's these ones here. Uh, I just put a stick on those with some E6000 glue. Got that right here. And next step is... I'm going to put them through my lapidary machine right here. And I'll show you what they look like finished product when they're actually earrings. Thanks for sticking around today. And I apologize that first set of stones I showed you was uh, actually black agate. And these ones are imperial jade. So I'm going to, uh, I've, I've worked these already so that you don't get bored watching. I've taken the stick off now. Now what I have to do is the final fitting so that they fit inside the lip of the studs and hoops. This wheel that I'm working the jade on is a soft resin wheel. It's 280 grit. It's where I kind of do a lot of the finicky work to make it fit inside the stainless steel um, uh, hoop earrings. So uh, thanks for sticking around this long. If you're enjoying this, uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Helps me make more like this in the future. Very shortly, I'm going to show you the entire finished product, what it looks like as a set of earrings. And there we have it, a beautiful set of Imperial Jade hoop style earrings. If you'd like to have these in your collection, these will be for sale. Just leave me a message down below. Thank you so much for your time today. Enjoy your day.